right, so let's say that I drew my basic face proportions, started with an upside down A, which I did here on my watercolor paper. Then I divided that egg into those proportions that we just talked about. So halfway down here were the eyes. And then again, halfway down, I put a little notch for the bottom of the nose, halfway down for the opening of the mouth. But this is my initial sketch that I'm going to be using for the quick study, the portrait sketch of this figure, okay? So I've got my proportions in there. I know I want to block out some of the lightest of the highlights because if I want to be nice and loose and goosey about the uh, colors that I'm using in the face, I don't want to have to paint around all of these really bright highlights that are happening in the face, right? I want to go ahead and block those out with some masking fluid. If I don't have masking fluid, I can certainly paint around those, right? There are ways that, that, you, can, that you can do that. But what I've done here is put a little bit of masking fluid in those highlights that are happening, the lower lid, right? Everybody can see that, those little bits of light that are happening. Those are pretty light, right? So I want to be able to use the skin tone all over without worrying about, you know, getting those exact shapes. Also, obviously, I'm noticing that there are lights in the nose, lights on the cheek, lights on the forehead, right, on the chin. Those are places that I want to try to keep a little bit lighter, but knowing that this is going to be my sketch and not a formal portrait, what I'm gonna do is to simply keep those a little more watery and to avoid those with the darker skin tone that I, that I use around it, okay? So I'm just gonna try, try to kind of lay that in, in, in the, the, the prep that I did here, I did use a little bit of masking fluid just for the brightest of the highlights in the nose, right? And so that's something that I that I want to keep really the white of the paper. But for the rest of them, I'm gonna maybe just kind of work work around it. Okay. So I'm gonna take my my brush and I'm using my really big square brush, right? So it's my one inch brush. And I'm kind of almost like forcing myself to use a really big brush because I want to keep it, you know, keep it loose. I don't want to get too tight. Like after all, this is a study. This is a sketch. Okay. So using my big brush, I'm going to get just water and I'm going to go ahead and just paint water over the entire face. And we've used a little bit of this technique before using wet into wet washes and something like, you know, um, a background, right, for uh, a flower painting, for example. So really wet. Quickly, though, I'm going to go over here to my burnt sienna. And I'm going to touch it with just a little bit of my umber, right? It's a darker brown, but I want to keep the warmth of this lovely kind of orangey burnt sienna. And I'm making up a really big puddle. And what I'm going to try to do is to drop that color in and just let that bleed out. But I'm, I'm not going to, hopefully, cover the, the places where I want it to be bright, right? So I'm going to kind of work around that area. There's a really bright highlight on the cheek. I'm going to keep the chin a little bit lighter as well. So kind of using my big brush to kind of under those shapes of light. I want some color in those areas around it. And also remember that 
you know, mouths, lips, our skin as well, right? So paint, paint those your skin tone also because you want to you wanna have a little bit of color in them, right? That's part of the face as well. So as I continue, it's, you know, going to dry just a little bit as I work. But I have, again, the places in the painting where I'm going to have a little bit of transition. Maybe I want to soften that transition a little bit. Kind of moving around that shape a little bit. And you know, it, as long as the painting is still wet, I can lift a little bit of color if I need to. But I can also drop a little more where it, that's needed, right? To kind of put a little, a little more paint, a little more skin tone. And the highlight on the forehead is is there, but maybe it's not completely white. So maybe I'll kind of bring a little more color up into that space. When you're doing something like this with, you know, she has this really, really cool kind of hair style that overlaps her hair with her forehead and the, the cheekbones a little bit. Um, don't be afraid to to go beyond the edge of the hairline because this is a color that's not nearly as dark as the black of her hair, right? So I can always overlap and, you know, bring those colors back on top of it if I need to. So I don't have to worry about going too far out this direction. So because of that, I'm going to say, okay, well, her neck comes out here, but maybe I'll expand that a little bit because I don't want to leave any gaps. And I have a little bit of that highlight on the nose masked out, so I want to make sure that I've got some color on the underside of the nose here. And let's see, as it starts to dry a little bit, you know, I'm going to keep working with the Burnt Sienna, the Umber, and I'm going to keep darkening it wet into wet. Some of the pictures that I've included in your assignment file have, have a little more of a, like a distinct line uh, and shape for the shadows. Some of them don't, and this is one of them that doesn't really because the lights on the cheeks and the nose, while I can see those areas and while I can see those shapes, they're not, you know, we don't have harsh lines like there are in some of the other ones. So I'm keeping, keeping this wet into wet technique going a little farther. So still dropping in a good amount of that color and paint. There is a shadow, a very distinct shape of shadow underneath the nose. So I'll, I'll be kind of going back in that area with some darks, you know, even after this dries. But let's go ahead and put, put in those warm browns where we see them. And let's see, put in just a little more over here on the left. And I, you know, I keep mentioning I'm still using this big brush because, again, I don't want 
a lot of streaks in the face. I just want areas of color. Using as big a brush as possible it helps help me avoid any kind of streaks. All right, so I don't want to fiddle with it too much because if I start to kind of fiddle too much with my brush, I'm going to start removing some of the color and I really want to just kind of keep depositing color as, as much as I can. Um, perhaps one area that I would add just a hair more paint and more color might be right here underneath the chin. So this is kind of the sketch idea and might cover, you know, what, maybe the first or second kind of steps in making a portrait, right? So I've identified the places where I want the painting to be lighter, right? And so the highlights on the faces, you know, with a dry brush, you can kind of lift, while that's still a little bit wet, you can lift some of those highlights if you need to, but try not to overwork it. This is really meant to be a kind of generalization of the lights and the darks and to give a sense of the overall skin tone, okay? Now, if I look at the, the photo again, a, a lot of the darks is gonna happen because when I, when I add the blacks of her hair as well as the headdress, those, that's gonna give me the darker range of you know, what I'm seeing in the photo. But in the process of the face, you know, I've got a pretty good amount of color in there. I've got the highlights still in place. You know, I don't, I don't want to over, overdo the color, especially in a sketch, right? We're, we're just kind of giving, giving a sense of the, the lights and the darks in a much, much more kind of general way. One thing I would do once this dries is, and even before I take out the high, the masking fluid, I'm gonna go back in with some darks, right? So when we meet again on Thursday, the second kind of step I'm gonna do here for my portrait study is to, to lay in some line work and some defined shapes that will really help me define the eyes, the underside of the nose, the shape of the mouth, because right now they're just kind of, you know, it's all one thing, right? So when I when we meet again on Thursday, I'll take that just a little bit further, but this needs to dry. So the wet into wet stuff is something you could certainly, you know, take a stab at and do, get some practice with that. Draw your basic proportions of your face using, you know, using these same kind of basic principles that we talked about. Choose your image, right? So there are hopefully, you know, some, some variety of things that appeal to you in terms of types of faces and things like that. So maybe make those decisions. And if you would like to go ahead and take a stab at those first couple of steps in your sketch, you don't have to commit to anything if you don't like what you have. And one good thing about a sketch is that you can put almost an overall color over the whole thing with just some pencil lines in there and then not commit to any, anything much else, right? You can put in some of those kind of more controlled shapes and, you know, the lines of the eyes and the shape of the nose. You can do those with something like this, right? A much smaller brush, right? So if you feel like this is kind of, whoa, I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm not really doing anything specific, that's the idea, right? Keep it pretty general, keep it pretty loose. You know, as your wet into wet wash starts to dry a little bit, if you want to do a little bit of lifting of some of those wet into wet areas, you know, now's the time to do it before it gets too, too dark, right? Before it dries. But don't go overboard with that either because you want to keep it, you know, keep it nice and loose. Keep some color in place, right? And you can always go back in and, you know, we'll work with those darker shapes uh, on Thursday, okay? So this is the idea of working wet into wet washes 
doing a, doing a portrait sketch and using those first couple of steps, just laying in wet into wet washes to establish some color, you know, put those basic proportions in place. All right.